All right, so what we're going to do today is we're going to use Photopea to create the Ruben's face illusion. Now to do that, we're going to need to take a picture of our face, duplicate that layer, flip the layer, and organize it in a way that we can make it into a believable face illusion. So to do that, I'm going to get rid of myself there. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to go File, Open More, and we're going to take a picture. Now, once we're in here, it should pop up on the screens for us to uh, take this picture. And what we want to do is a profile picture. So to do a profile picture, what I'm going to be doing is turning my head this way, whichever way you want to go. Okay. So line it up so that you don't have to look for this. So I'm lining it up on take picture. I'm going to look straight ahead and click OK. Now, if you are happy with the picture, then we're going to move forward. Let's see how it looks. And I'm not going to be quite happy with this because, uh, well, I guess we can use that. That'll be okay. Um, but you can see where my head is kind of being cropped off there. So if you want it to actually be the whole thing, you can do that. But let's go ahead and use it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just crop out. Actually, I'm going to need, let's see, go ahead and crop it bigger. <laughs> And all I'm going to do to begin is eliminate my background. So to eliminate my background, again, it's been a while since we've been in Photopea. Uh, but remember, you have things like the magic wand which are, or object selection, which is back here. So if you have a lot of um, you know, contrast in there, you should be able to use that fairly quickly. Oops, not that much. Um, you could also simply take and make selections. And again, what we really want to do is using our navigator, and I know I'm going kind of quick, but this should not be your first time learning about the program. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and decide where I'm going to make the base of my vase, and I'm going to make it right here. So basically, all of this space here is going to be cut off. All right, control D is deselect, in case you forgot. And basically what I'm gonna do is take my face, make a duplicate layer. I'm gonna select the layer, two finger click or right click with a mouse, and I'm gonna free transform it, and I'm gonna drag it across like this. Okay. Now I do want to keep it as accurate as I can. I don't want it looking like that. Um, and again, if you want, you can actually look at the, so it's a little off there. So right there, it's 697 for the width. Uh, and I'm looking at the pixels. So if we go to 697, 698 will be close enough. <clears throat> Control D. And basically, here is my base. Ooh, and you can see some of my other head there still needs cropped. So we'll go ahead and get that out of there. Control D. And I'm going to put that right up next to it and make it into my base. Now, once you've done that, we can put in a fill layer for the background. And what we're going to end up doing is actually turning our face into a silhouette here. But for now, let's go ahead and just put red so we can see how the... Oops. There we go. Remember, our layer order matters. Um, and there you can kind of see the white around where I didn't edit it that well. <clears throat> and that's okay. This is just meant to be more of a fun design um, where we're working. <coughs> Excuse me, where we're working with this. Now, the thing I can do... Um, is if I select the area, if I just want to make my faces into a black silhouette, I can select using basically the negative space and then do an invert. So what I can do before that, I could do these as two separate layers, but you should also know how to link your layers. So I can simply link, link them or I can merge them. So if I'm happy with both of those, I can merge them. 
And now um, I'm able to just click the negative space. Again, you should understand negative space is what we're talking about. And I should be able to invert the selection. So select the inverse. I'm up here in select, inverse. And I could hit that with the paint bucket. I'm just going to color it in. And it's only going to color the part that is inverted selection. And it's kind of rough. You can, uh, it's not the highest quality, but you can see my design. Hmm, my head looks a little different on this side, doesn't it? Uh, but you can see my basic design for my base or face illusion. I think it's because my crop's wrong. Oh, don't do that. And again, this is just meant to be a fun, quick little... Oh, oh I don't like that. Uh, this is just meant to be a fun little project showing the vase or face activity. We'll go ahead and bring this way in. And again, it is Ruben's face. So when you look at this, you should see either a vase or a face. Now I'm just going to go File. You can rename it. And then File. Export as JPEG. I saved it and it downloads my file and I'll be able to upload that to the classroom page for a grade. And that concludes the vase or face uh, design. And again, you can totally leave it like this if you want. I think it's kind of more fun if it's both of your faces. I think it would be a really fun design just to leave it like that. But again, just so that you understand the activity of positive and negative. And in this case, it's an illusion because we can't really discern which one's positive and which one's negative in the case for the vase or face.